Hello friends, Pastor Dave here for our daily devotional. Thanks for joining me on this Thursday. I wanted to continue talking about something that I just brought up in passing last night. I talked about racism and why I think racism is such a big problem. I think it comes out of fear. When you have groups of people that are identifiably different from one another, there's always that fear that somebody from another group will favor their own and not you. And so out of that fear, there's a sense, well, I have to protect myself, so I will ally myself with people that are in my group over and against people from another group. And so if they see that you're protecting yourselves in different ways, then they will be confirmed in their idea that they can't trust you either. And so it becomes an escalating activity of self-protection and fear. God has the answer to that. The world doesn't have an answer to that, but God does. He said we can return kindness when others give us evil because we can trust in the God who makes everything just. Let's talk about that on something deeper. In this world that's so often ruled by fear, where one group is set up against another group and it seems like there's no way to work out the issues because we don't even see things the same way, we don't even uh, judge things the same way, and we look with suspicion upon each other. God says, no, when somebody persecutes you, you pray for them. When somebody mistreats you, you return kindness to them. In fact, you are to love those who hate you. And this seems like it's totally unrealistic. We'd rather go with the Old Testament that says an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Even that was just a limitation. It's saying you should not go beyond a just punishment. That you can't go beyond an eye if an eye is lost. But Jesus said, no. You've heard it said, but I tell you, and he gave us a higher standard. That when people mistreat us, we're called to forgive and to treat and return with kindness. How do we do that? Well, I think there's a a perfect example of this in 1 Samuel 24. If you remember the story, King Saul was jealous of David because he was getting all the accolades and he was a very accomplished person and Saul was threatened by David, even though David had never done anything against him. And so he got his army and he was chasing David down. And one day, Saul left his army, went into a cave to relieve himself, and David and his men were hiding in that cave. And while Saul took off his coat, David walked up behind and cut off a corner. And his men said, why don't you just kill him? And he said, no, he's the anointed one of God. I'm not going to do that. Even though Saul was trying to kill him. After Saul goes back to his camp, Um, David then goes out. In verse 8 it says, Then David went out of the cave and called out to Saul, My lord the king. When Saul looked behind him, David bowed down and prostrated himself with his face to the ground. He said to Saul, Why do you listen when men say David is bent on harming you? This day you have seen with your own eyes how the Lord delivered you into my hands in the cave. Some urged me to kill you, but I spared you. I said, I will not lay my hand on my Lord, because he is the Lord's anointed. See, my father, look at this piece of robe in my hand. I cut off the corner of your robe, but did not kill you. See that there is nothing in my hand to indicate that I am guilty of wrongdoing or rebellion. I have not wronged you, but you are hunting me down to take my life. May the Lord judge between you and me, and may the Lord avenge the wrongs you have done to me, but my hand will not touch you. As the saying goes, from evildoers come evil deeds, so my hand will not touch you. What a man after God's own heart. He had every reason of self-defense to kill Saul. His men urged him to do it. They thought he was a fool not to do it. And he said, I'm not going to touch the Lord's anointed. Why could he do that? Because he said, the Lord is going to judge between you and me. He said, from evildoer come evil deeds. 
I expect this of you, Saul. But God's going to avenge the wrongs you have done to me. I don't have to do it myself because God will. The story goes on. He said, Against whom has the king of Israel come out? Who are you pursuing? A dead dog? A flea? May the Lord be our judge and decide between us. May he consider my cause and uphold it. May he vindicate me by delivering me from your hand. When David had finished saying this, Saul asked, Is that your voice, David, my son? And he wept aloud. You are more righteous than I, he said. You have treated me well, but I have treated you badly. Jesus said, When you answer with kindness to somebody who has given you evil, then you're heaping burning coals on their head. I don't, see, I don't think he's saying that you're going to give them third-degree burns. He's saying you're going to shame them. And even that's a gift. Because this gave Saul an opportunity to repent of the evil that he was doing. And so when you answer with kindness, you may find that the anger of the other melts away. I've seen it happen. I've seen it happen where somebody was just yelling at me and and I answered back with kindness and it just stopped them in their tracks. God's in charge. And so we can trust Him to take our cause if we're trying to do what's right. If we're not, then God's not on our side. I remember Abraham Lincoln was talking to one of his supporters, and he said, you know, we're going to be successful because God's on our side. And Abraham Lincoln said, I'm I'm not really concerned with figuring out if God's on my side. I want to figure out if I'm on God's side. So let's be on God's side, and then trust that God can make sure, even if other people do evil things, that God is going to judge between us, and he's going to take up our cause. And if vengeance is God's, If he will repay, then the responsibility is out of our hands. We don't have to. We can just trust that he'll make it right. Let's pray. Thank you, Father, for this example of a man who truly did try to follow you and did the right thing, even when he could have been justified in doing something far worse. I pray, Father, that we'll have this same attitude and that we will respond with kindness even when the world thinks that we should retaliate. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. God bless you all. I love you. Hope you have a great night, and we'll see you tomorrow night.